Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Can the Miticon on the GFX be my digital Pentax 105 2.4? A legendary lens that is one of my absolute favorites. That's what I'd hoped when I first bought this lens, and after six months of use and some recent side-by-side -side testing, I'm starting to wonder if Miticon deliberately took inspiration from the Pentax lens, or if this was just a happy accident. So in this video today, we're gonna review this unique lens, take a look at the image quality, the special look it provides, some direct comparisons with the Pentax, as well as another popular vintage lens, talk about a few dislikes, and chat about who this is for and if I think it's worth the money. So this was one of the first lenses that I bought for the GFX, and it's a pretty unique offering just because there really aren't any other options out there around this focal length that are this fast. This 65mm f1.4 translates roughly to like a 51mm 1.1 in 35. So obviously, you know, gives you the ability to create images with a really shallow depth of field and nice separation, but still have a focal length and a field of view that's a little bit wider than a traditional portrait lens. Right now, this thing's going for $599 USD on Miticon's website. I think this is one of the best bargains out there, especially when we're talking a brand new lens for the GFX system. You can't go wrong with the price. So let's talk about build and handling. So build is quite nice. You know, this lens is all metal. It has this huge focus ring at the back and an aperture ring up front. So they're reversed. Nice and smooth though, they feel good. But I will say it is an absolute tank. So the weight of this thing is substantial. And even though I'm usually not that picky with gear, when you mount this lens to something like the GFX 50R, it does really kind of throw the balance off. The camera becomes really front heavy and it's not the most uh, enjoyable to use when it comes to handling. And you know, even though it is a solid lens, I will say uh, while I was shooting this review, I had this weird issue where all of a sudden the aperture wouldn't stop down past 5.6. And it wasn't until I took a risk and just forced it that I was able to kind of get past there and now it's working fine. Something that I didn't really expect after only using this lens for say like six or eight months. So jumping into image quality, we'll start right away by talking about the unique look that this lens provides. Uh, and for me, I bought the Miticon just because of how fast it is. That was the appeal. And I often find myself shooting with this wide open or even like a stop down at F2. And right from day one, the images from this combo have always reminded me of the look that I get when using the Pentax 6.7 and 105 2.4. And we'll talk about that coming up here soon. But you know, for environmental portrait work, I love the look that this lens provides. Shooting these wider frames, you know, full body portraits where you're including your subject in the environment, yet you still have this separation where you can isolate them. And then this is also just a nice lens to use for other types of work as well. Obviously, you know, just like with portrait photography, you can shoot some frames where you get creative and isolate certain subjects. But then I've also used this quite a bit for like landscape and environmental type photography. And it does work in most situations, but there are a few shortcomings that I'll talk about after. Of course, with the GFX, you know, you can adapt all sorts of older, fast vintage glass from 35 millimeter cameras. It's part of the fun, but from the tests that I've done, none of them provide the same look as the Miticon. And then also with those 35 mil lenses, you're often using kind of the extremes of the image circle, whereas the Miticon is made for the GFX sensor. And while I was making this video, I met up with a friend of mine, Tom Humble. He has a YouTube channel as well. You should check that out. And he shoots with a Voigtlander 58 mil F1.4 on his GFX. It's a pretty popular lens for the system. And we did some side-by-side -side comparison shots and I found the Voigtlander to be just not as nice as this. Obviously it's a little bit wider, uh, heavier vignetting, which can be cleaned up obviously to each their own. But I also found uh, like the out of focus areas on the Metacon to be a little more smooth uh, and pleasing. So when it comes to sharpness, you know, wide open, there's a little bit of softness some fringing and some blooming. I'm completely okay with it. It'll be personal preference though. Uh, but as soon as you stop down to F2 and beyond, it sharpens right up. When it comes to vignetting, again, wide open. There's a little bit of it. As soon as you stop down, it goes away completely. So I'd say it's pretty well controlled. And then, you know, flare seems good as well. I didn't really run into any issues where this lens couldn't handle it, even shooting into like direct backlight and things like that. So overall, pretty happy with the performance. 
Back to the video in a second, just have to quickly talk about the sponsor today, which is Squarespace. One of the things on my to-do list this year is to give my website a bit of a refresh and an update, and Squarespace has been a really great tool to do just that. They have a wide range of really nice, clean, professional templates to choose from, and then I just love the simplicity and the ease of use. So, for example, I'm building out a gallery with some of my recent work from Wales, and just being able to click on images and drag them to rearrange and reorder is really great when you're building out sequences. You can also add things like an online store if you want to sell prints, books, zines, things like that. So check out squarespace.com today for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, so the part that everyone's probably been waiting for, and that is talking about how the Miticon compares to the Pentax. I wanted to do some like direct side-by-side -side comparisons for this video so we could see exactly how they stack up. And the Pentax focal length in 35 would translate to, I believe, a 52 mil 1.2. So very, very similar to the Miticon. So I shot a bunch of comparison images, some handheld, a few on the tripod. And when we take a look at the tripod frames, you can see with these first two that the field of view is so incredibly similar, which wasn't completely unexpected, but they're almost hard to tell apart. So that was cool to see. I also just want to shout out Fuji for the job they did with their Acros simulation. Uh, the film frames were shot on Fuji Acros and the GFX files are simply using the Acros profile and they look so incredibly close. Okay, now for the fun parts of environmental portraits. And I will say these were all shot handheld and I noticed afterwards the Pentax frames were just a little bit wider, but that's because I forgot that the Pentax viewfinder is only around 90% coverage. So I was probably stepping back to match the frame on location and that pushed me back a little bit too far. But regardless, you know, without being too picky, when we look at these side by side, I would say that's probably about as good as you could ask for when it comes to matching the 105 look on digital. And if we look really close, you know, if anything, I would say the Miticon has a little bit smoother out of focus areas, and maybe there's a slight difference in compression, but again, that could just be from the distance to subject. So overall, it is really cool to see those comparisons and know that I actually wasn't just like romanticizing the Miticon and the look it gave me. And in fact, these images that this lens produces do really come close to replicating that look with the Pentax 105. Okay, so a couple quick dislikes. The first one is just, again, the weight and the size. Like I said, mounted to the GFX, throws the balance off. It's not the most enjoyable to work with. Second is that this feels like a bit of a specialist lens that I wouldn't travel just solo with. And the reason for that is because it's so fast, it only stops down to F16. And on the larger sensor, if you're shooting like landscape images, it can be a bit limiting when it comes to depth of field. And then the last thing is just the quality. And again, this thing does feel solid. It feels really nice, but it is a cheaper lens from uh, like a less established third-party manufacturer. And just having this weird aperture issue um, that I can still kind of hear just makes me kind of wonder how long this thing will last for. So overall, this is one of my favorite lenses and one that I'll never part with. And I'm definitely willing to accept kind of its few minor shortcomings just because I absolutely love the images that this produces. If you're someone who is after a lens that gives you a normal field of view with a lot of separation for environmental portraits, I think this is the best option, seeing as it's a lens that's native for the GFX system. As we saw, it really does give similar results to the Pentax 105 2.4. And you know, in this day and age where film is only getting more expensive, it is really cool to have a digital option that brings some of that magic.